Fusion 360, how to apply materials for imported meshes and also how to apply texture and colors. So to get started, I'm gonna go in 3ds Max and over here I have uh, two models. So one is a teapot that can be created directly from the standard primitives within uh, 3ds Max. And the other one is a car. So the car has a texture. In order to have the object transferred to, to Fusion. So for example, the teapot, I will have that selected. I will go up to File, Export, Export Selected. I already have them saved over here, but I'm gonna give it a new name. So let's see, teapot export. So the file format will be OBJ for this. For this model, I can go with uh, without export materials, but I will leave that checked for now. Since the mesh doesn't have any texture, that will not be transferred uh, to Fusion. So we see that uh, the file export uh, was complete. If you go back to Fusion, if you go up to Insert, and over here we're gonna have the Insert Mesh option. And we see that these allow us to add either existing STL files, OBJ, and we also have, um, let's say, the newer file format, 3MF. But uh, uh, it's mostly best to use OBJ files, not STL files, because those already can include additional information, which is texture. For STL files, you only have vertex and associated uh, geometry. So let's go with insert mesh. I'm gonna go with the file that uh, we just created. So it's called teapot export. We're gonna see that the model will load like this. I can go with different visual styles. Now it's set on a wireframe. I can go by pressing on control four to shaded view. And we see that by default, let's say the mesh is flipped. I'm gonna flip it up direction by clicking on this flip direction of Y and Z axis. We see that the unit type will be millimeters and um, I can snap this to the ground, but the model is already snapped to the ground as we see the shadows within, uh, within the viewport. So I will click OK and I will see that the imported mesh will look like this. Within the three panel, it will uh, be, let's say, a mesh, like we see this model, teapot 001. So the naming 001 was given by 3ds Max. When you create a, a new object, it will uh, receive that uh, incremental number, as we see box 001. So in order to apply um, a material for this, or a, let's say a texture, we can go on Appearance by pressing A on the keyboard. This will open up the Appearance toolbar. It will look like this. You can also have access to the appearance if you're gonna go on the left panel on the render workspace. If I'm gonna swap to that, we are also gonna see an environment added to Fusion 360, but we're gonna have the appearance toolbar over here, so we can activate, it will be the same. And over here we have various textures. For example, if I wanna make this, uh, let's say, water, heavy sea, I can add that material over here it will be black and it will have let's say some uh, some sh shadings but I can also go with other materials like painted black other various paints if some of the materials are not already downloaded uh, you can have those downloaded on your local PC let's see if I will find some materials that I don't have added on this PC we can also use emissive light, so this will um, act uh, as a light source within the, within the scene. We see some foam materials. This will also have a texture. And for materials that have a texture, we can go to texture map control. So it will be this at the top. I'm going to select the object and we see that by default the projection will be automatic but we can have that, uh, that change. We can define uh, an axis for a planner, a box. We can also see the, the UV unwrapping of that model. 
but mainly Fusion is not, let's say, the best software uh, to texture. It's better to do that uh, differently, like in 3ds Max, you will have uh, a lot more control. And you can have the model already textured with, um, with the desired texture. For example, I'm going to choose this box, I'm going to go with M, I will create a new material. I see that uh, it's set to standard legacy, that means that I only have to change the diffuse map. I'm gonna also search for, uh, for a texture, for, let's say I want a brick texture to apply on that box. Let's see, I will pick this one, so I will have that saved. We see it will be on the, on the desktop brick texture, I can go back to 3ds Max, select an empty material space, go to diffuse, and I will input a bitmap over here, so type in bitmap. I know that the texture was set on the desktop, so let's take a look of that. Okay, quite a lot of images over here. I'm mainly just gonna, okay, so I found it, so this will be the texture. I can have the box selected, apply the, the material. If I'm gonna go with a show shaded material in viewport, I'm gonna see that I will see that texture added to the model. And now I have more control on, let's say, on the texturing. I can go with modify, modify this. I can type in uh, UV map. This will do the same, um, let's say, texture map control that, uh, that we had over here. But we're gonna see that we're gonna have a lot more uh, more control, and we're also gonna see the preview of that material. So if I'm gonna go with something like box, because because our element will be box-like, I can uh, select the UV map, open the gizmo, and have the possibility to to scale up the texture. So for example, maybe I would want the texture to be something like this. I see that the texture is not seamless, so it will uh, repeat. So I'm gonna scale it all the way like this. We can also go with uh, W, that will allow us to have the texture translated on the shape, and we can also have it rotated. If you're gonna go with E for rotation, we can also do individual faces if you want to. We're just gonna have to convert our mesh, select a, a face. For example, I'm gonna go on the back face, and as a reference, I'm going to use uh, the, um, the same model, but I'm going to have it rotated. So I'm going to need to define a new material, have that applied over here. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to replace it, I'm going to rename it. And I have the possibility to only uh, modify this uh, face, so I will go again with UV mapping. And we're going to see that we are only going to influence the texture on this face, since this uh, is the selected face. So for example, maybe I would like to have my texture tilted and also scaled, just as, a, as an example. Now we have this model, I can uh, select it, go to File, Export, Export Selected, because this will be the only model that I want to transfer. I'm going to call this uh, Brick Cube. And it's important to, to do a map export, so it will be over here. We can also change the size of the map for this uh, case study, will be fine like this. I'm gonna have that exported, and now if I'm gonna go back to, to Fusion, I will need to swap back to Design, because over here we have the possibility to insert meshes. And we're gonna see that we're gonna have this brick cube, and the texture will be located in the Maps folder. If I'm gonna open that, I'm gonna see that um, this will be the model, again I can uh, flip it, the Y and Z axis. If I'm gonna click OK, I'm gonna see that I will have my model texture just uh, the way uh, it was in 3ds Max. The only difference is that over here we have a bright environment, we don't have any shadows, while in 3ds Max we're also gonna have some shadows. As I rotate the camera, some of the faces will be shaded, we can have that uh, adjusted uh, within the scenes. There are multiple, let's say, um, materials and lights that we can uh, enable and disable. But overall the model will look the same. 
Even more, if I'm gonna double click on that uh, model, it will open with a 3D viewer from uh, Windows. And we're gonna see that again, this will be the mod model uh, texture, and we have that texture rotated and scaled on uh, the back face, while we have the other texture applied on the separate um, faces. It's a similar workflow if you are using uh, with OBJ. If you are not using 3ds Max, you can also do this with Blender. For example, if I want to move the car and I want to have it texture with Infusion, I can do that. Uh, it will be the same workflow. So again, insert mesh. I know that this is a police car. I'm going to have this open and I'm going to see that the model will look like this and it will have the same size. So we have unit type millimeters. We're going to have the, the same car added to, to Fusion. So this is how you can uh, address some, um, let's say, aspects regarding mesh texturing and coloring and how do you apply, uh, apply the infusion. As you saw, let's say the render workbench is quite uh, limited within, uh, within Fusion. There are other software that are specialized on, uh, on texturing. But you can manipulate some of the elements with texture control. You can also add um, some decals if you want to, like a logo on, a, on an object. We see that for this, uh, we're going to need a, either a PNG, a JPEG file, or a TIFF image in order to apply those. And after that, that we, can, um, we can do the renders. We can also change the scene settings if you want uh, to define a different environment. So I hope that uh, you find this video useful also kumar if uh, if you check this uh, this video please let me know in the in the comment section i will also start uh, creating more uh, more videos for 3ds max um, fusion and unity in the near future okay thanks for watching